These two laptops cost about a combined $5,000 when they were new. Unfortunately, this one overheats and this one doesn't show a display. But today we're gonna fix that. Let's get started on the Razer. This video is sponsored by iFixit, more on them in a minute. So this is the Razer Blade Pro 17. It's got a Core i7, 2.3 gigahertz, and 16 gigs of RAM. This computer starts up and seems to work just fine, except for the fact that the fans ramp up as soon as you start doing anything. So I'm gonna get the bottom cover off. Let's have a look at the inside. It's a little dusty, not too bad. So I'm just gonna power it on real quick so you can see what the fans are doing. And then we can judge and see whether I actually get them quieter when I do the repairs. There we go. I haven't even logged in. I haven't even put my pin in and the fans are already kicking up. So that's the issue I'm trying to fix. Let's get into it and check out the thermal paste first. Now, if you've been watching my videos for quite a while, I actually did make a video that included this laptop in it. And if I remember right, I did clean the fans out and the heat sinks, but I think this one was super dirty. So I think what I might do here is remove the fan and heat sinks, and I might even just take the board out. I don't think there's really anything under the board that would affect anything, but I do wanna make sure and clean the keyboard and everything like that. So first thing I'm gonna do though is remove the battery power from the machine, and now we're safe to continue working and disassembling it. The Razer Blade Pro 17 sold brand new for $2,700 to $4,000. Now, right now you can get these on Amazon for about $1,200. So that's significantly less than they were when they were brand new, but still quite a bit of money for a laptop. So I'm really hoping I can fix this one and get these fans working right. Just have these cables on the edges. Display cables. I guess I could unhook it since we're going to need to do that anyway. Okay, fans come out separately. Fan is not plugged. It's not the cleanest fan in the world, but it's also not that dirty. Yeah, same here. There we go. Okay, what do we got here? It looks like some thermal paste. And I was going to say it looks like definitely not the perfect amount, but I think I'm the one that put that on there. So clearly it's got to be the perfect amount. And these heat sinks also are pretty clean. So I don't really see an issue there. Like I said, I'm gonna remove this board so we can look at the keyboard underneath. This doesn't, uh, actually that looks okay. It looks kind of funky when you look at it, but, ah! Now it's stuck to my finger, nice one. So let's remove this perfect amount of thermal paste. And I'm thinking after I clean anything from under the board, and I'm going to apply some liquid metal to this bad boy. I feel like that will get it much cooler. Okay, and those are looking pretty good. We'll put some conformal coating on these little guys once we get this board out and then back in. For now, let's get it out so we can have a look at the keyboard, make sure that's all clean, and make sure the top of the board is clean as well. There we go. Let's look at the bottom side. It's a little dirty, really not too bad at all though. It's gonna come into some canned air. And I'm gonna use my brush to loosen any of the dirt over here. Okay, and keyboard actually looks pretty good. I think actually this looks great. Let's just get the board back in and get some liquid metal installed. So now with liquid metal, really the only thing I'm that worried about, and I'm not super worried about this, but I wanna make sure that the liquid metal doesn't flow down onto these little capacitors down here, probably some resistors too. So what I'm gonna do is put some conformal coating over these, and that will protect them just in case the liquid metal does happen to um, flow over the edge and onto them. I'm gonna be using TG Shield from Thermal Grizzly. Same company that makes the liquid metal I'll be using in a minute here. And we're just gonna go over here and apply it like that. And apply it like this. Comes in like a nail polish bottle. In fact, in one of my videos, somebody said they thought it was nail polish. Pretty sure it's not, but who knows? Maybe it is. Either way, it seems to do what it's supposed to, so. Nail polish or not nail polish, I don't really care. 
gonna give a nice thick coating on this. It'll take a bit to dry, but it will protect everything real nicely. And I just wanna make sure the heat sink side is just as clean, clean as we can get it. The cleaner we can get it, the better the liquid metal will stick to the surfaces. Just have better contact there, which means better cooling, which is what we're going for. Okay, we just need a tiny bit. This is actually the first time, I think the first time installing liquid metal in a laptop. I'm usually doing it on PS5s, and PS5s take a ton of liquid metal compared to how much laptops take. So I don't know if this tube is full. It is not, oh, there we go. Yep, that's too much. Okay, let's start with that much. So we're just gonna rub it all over the surface here. Now a tiny bit on here. Okay, that looks pretty good. Tiny bit on here. Oop, too much. Tiny bit on here. A little more than that. This is actually taking pretty well. Coating the surfaces and I have to rub it in a little bit in spots, but for the most part, it's looking really good. This one's gonna be a little more difficult, especially because I can't quite see how much I need to have on here. Can't see where the square is that the die is gonna go right against. Okay, I think that is looking pretty good. We've got a thin coating on all the surfaces. Let's get the heat sinks back installed. Hopefully this is gonna solve our cooling issue. But now that I think about it, I wanna make sure that that conformal coating is totally dry. So I'm gonna set this aside and let's take a look at this LG laptop. Before we take a look at this LG Gram laptop, I wanted to tell you about the new partnership between HP and iFixit. HP is now selling genuine OEM parts right on iFixit's website. So if you have an HP laptop and you need things like a battery, iFixit.com is the place to go to get that genuine part. But iFixit also sells all the tools that you might need to replace that part. In fact, they even sell kits that have the battery and the tools all in one kit. So if you're looking for genuine OEM HP parts and great iFixit tools, and toolkits, go to ifixit.com slash tronicsfix. I'll put a link right in the description that'll take you right there. And here we go. Let's see what this one does. Starts up so far. Okay. It does show a picture on the screen. It like flashed and then it came back. So, oh, this looks good. So far the screen is staying on okay. Name your device, Fred. Oh, okay, look at that, wow. Okay, that's a problem. Um, oh, here we go. Okay. So, it was flashing and just moving the screen made it stop. I wonder if there's like a ribbon cable or something that's loose in there. That would be amazing if that's all it was. I mean, with my luck, it's probably not, but okay. I don't want to take this too far. I'm going to go and finish as much setup as I can and then kind of see how the screen does during this process. We'll set up as a new device. Okay, I think at this point, I'm going to take the back cover off and let's take a look at that cable that connects the screen to the board and let's just see if that is fully connected and if there's any damage on it. The LG Gram laptop costs $1,600 brand new. Right now on Amazon, you can get one similar to the model that I'm working on for about $800. That's the used price, but still quite a bit of money for a laptop. And these LG Grams are nice and light, which I love about them. So I'm really hoping I can get this one fixed. Wow, this is a tiny computer. So this looks like the display cable right here. It goes up through the hinge here, and then another display cable over here. Nope, some sort of sensor apparently. Okay, so far I don't see anything obvious that should be causing that issue. 
This display cable, I mean, from what I can tell, it looks like it's on here pretty good. Uh, it is a little bit loose, though. Not like a lot, but there's a little bit of looseness in there. I don't know, that might be enough to do it. I don't see any issues with the cable itself. So then the other thing is if there's an issue where it goes through the hinge or something like that, I think I want to remove this hinge right here and have a look at how this display cable goes through the hinge. So then we can see if there's any issues there. And might as well undo this side too so we can just take the whole display off, hopefully. It's that one and this one. All right. And the next question is whether we should try and remove this back cover from the display. I really don't want to because that's a lot of work and kind of dangerous with this thin of a display. It'd be super easy to break that. But I kind of feel like we need to have this off of here so we can check out the display cable where it hooks into the display panel. So let's see if we can get it apart without breaking anything. Oh, there we go. Okay. Really don't like prying on this thing. There we go. Whoa. Good, time you, good thing I'm using a plastic tool. Got it. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Now it looks like... That connector goes right there. Oh, and it looks like it might have been a little loose right there. So, yeah, look at that. It wiggles around in there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is unstick it from this tape down here. There we go. Then I'm going to put this back in. And hopefully that's going to make it so... Actually, we need a little more... We need a little more room here. There we go. Now this is only part of it. Another part of the screen goes up here. So, I mean, I, I, this was definitely loose. I can't say for sure that that's the only issue here, but this is definitely an issue. Hopefully the only one. Okay. Make sure that's all the way in there as far as it can go. And it is. So we'll lock it down, retape this. Restick that down. Make sure it's got plenty of play in there. Okay, so that part's good. This part goes up into the display. I'm not sure how difficult the display is to remove, or if we even need to, but let's remove... Okay, you know what? A repair person needs to know when to stop, and this is where I stop messing with the display. I don't want to break it, so I'm going to reinstall it. I'm hoping that's enough to have caused the problem. I think it is, but I don't know for sure. The rest of the cable over here looks to be in good condition. So let's get this back installed and see if that one little cable is enough to fix it. Okay, good so far. Display cable. I don't know why I disconnected that without disconnecting the battery first. Always disconnect the battery before you work on any display stuff because simply messing around with this cable with the battery hooked up can cause it to burn out the backlight and probably other things too. Hopefully I didn't do that here. We'll find out soon enough. Okay, got everything back in. Now we can connect the battery back up. Now we can put the back cover back on. Then we can start it up and see if it works.
Now, before we take a look at that LG and see if that fixed the display issue, let's take a look and see if this razor is working. Now that that conformal coating has had plenty of time to dry, here we go. Does it power on? Oh, there we go, it's powering on. We got something on the screen. It's a little worried there for a second. Okay, let's listen for the fans though. Oh, zero fan noise so far. Okay, we got the fans coming on a little bit, which is sometimes what they'll do when they first turn on. That fan noise is significantly less than it was already. Even though the fans are on right now, let's see if they ramp back down. There we go, they're ramping way back down now. Okay, so the Razer laptop seems to be fixed. I need to use it for a little more extended periods of time and just make sure, but right now it seems like the fans are nice and quiet compared to what they were. In fact, right now they're, you can just barely even hear them. Now that we've got this one, at least I think fixed, let's take a look at that LG. So let's start up the LG Gram and see if it's fixed. Okay, good so far. Oh, and it already started flashing. But what I noticed is during startup, it didn't flash at all. So I think I might have an idea what might be going on. Okay, so I have to see if I can get to this. Oh, here we go. Need to go to device manager and over to display adapters. Come on. There we go. Oh. Almost there, oh, come on. We're going to uninstall the Intel Iris XE graphics. Uninstall. And there we go, it's fixed. I totally should have checked this before I started taking it apart, but for some reason I just forgot that some computers have that issue with that display adapter. But the nice thing is, even though I did take it apart, it was actually a super easy fix. So we're able to fix both the LG Gram and the Razer Blade Pro 17. If you like this type of video, I'll put another video up on your screen that I think you're gonna like as well, where I'm trying to fix even more laptops. If you need parts for your HP laptop, be sure to go to ifixit.com slash tronicsfix. Thank you for watching today, and I hope you have a good one.